Hey everyone, we just entered a town called Hart's Place, the smallest town in New Hampshire. Today is the 13th of April, 2023, and I was in some areas today, I saw 86 degrees, which is unheard of this time of year up here. We got the weather like that for two days, then it should all be back to normal soon. As you can see, there is still a good amount of snowpack, which means there could be blockages. So that's what we're out looking for. In weather this warm, it's melting fast. Water levels are all becoming very high on the rivers as a result of it melting so fast. It can cause devastating flooding when you get a day like this and it's raining. That's not happening this time, but water levels still are very high so every time we go over a pipe we're taking good notice to it look at this we got the maintenance train going across the road right here of the North Conway scenic railway they are getting ready to reopen this is a train that is for tourists basically this track here in the summertime it's like a five hour train ride and you see that car they have right there to put logs on there are a lot of trees that are probably falling down across the tracks from the winter you see they had an excavator to fix things yeah they're making sure all those tracks are safe so they can reopen their train rides Check this out everyone look at this farmers road just destroyed you can tell water's been blasting across it and there's definitely a culvert pipe up there blocked by beavers i even see lots of beaver remnants and stuff so i there's a farm right next to this that i believe owns this and there's a sign with a phone number i am going to take a picture of that call it when i get home and if the farmer wants that cleared for free i'll come back and do it sometime all right, everyone, the roadway is right over there. I just parked because I saw a whole bunch of water built up here, and it's backing up as far as the road where I could see it. I cannot really see the road here. And look at that big blockage. Came down and noticed that right away. I went down there just a second ago. You can see my footprints right there in the snow. Despite it being so hot out, wow, there's a lot of snow melting fast. This is causing quite the backup, okay? But it's not just this blockage I'm going to show you. So what needs to be done here is if the water level is a little lower. I can move a lot of that debris there, but right in the entrance is a giant log going across, not really diminishing its flow. It's going right under it without a problem. When I looked in the flowing water right there, it's actually four feet deep. This is a big, big pipe. And maybe we can clear a little bit of that right there. Wow. It is now 80 something degrees out. It doesn't look like it does it on camera. No, this is melting fast. And you saw, we just saw their maintenance train with a big excavator. Well, I guess they're working and prioritizing because this is not causing them a problem at the moment, but they easily could have grabbed that with their heavy machinery. And I can tell that debris has been there for years based on its rot and the way it's all placed there. So this is a seasonal train company, and that train's going back to their terminal. There won't be anything else coming down here today. This is where the pipe is exiting, completely underwater. And this I find very, very strange, okay? You have this giant, gigantic, deep pipe that I could walk through if it wasn't flooded. It, sometimes it must blast, because if it wasn't blasting at some point, it would become clogged. But something is keeping it pretty clear, and you see everything it's spitting out, is, this is kind of acting as a sediment pool. And then all the water's bottlenecked into that small, looks like two foot culvert with a slight blockage. And that right there is all overgrown. That must be an old abandoned train track that used to come right into this train track. That is what I would assume. Now I expected to come out here and just evaluate a little bit. Then I would come back to the vehicle and get the rake and stuff. But I'm not gonna touch the big pipe there unless we can get this water on the other side to drop a little bit, which will result it dropping on the other side, making it far less dangerous. Although, I'm still trying to figure out the amount of water that looks like it's entering. I don't see how it's fitting through that pipe. Maybe there's another one down there that's also handling it. So I'm gonna walk down this abandoned line and see. 
because this abandoned line is causing a problem to the active line. I doubt the railroad tracks are still there. Look at it, it looks like a sinkhole right there. Somebody was, oh my God, it wasn't a somebody walking. It was a big old moose. And based on the melt, that big old moose was walking down here. Maybe even yesterday, because it's hot out. Doesn't take much for their tracks to become distorted looking. Oh wow, look at this big, beautiful pond I never knew was here. Looks like at high times of flow, it goes right down to the pond, which it is right now. But most of it goes down here, then goes to the pond. Nice big squiggle. Wow, I, I gotta tell you guys, I haven't seen a moose in a while. Every year, they're getting more and more rare, which is really sad. Used to go out on the dirt roads with my grandparents. You'd see dozens every night at dusk. These days, you can drive a week and not even see one. So here's a small blockage. I already am very wet from another blockage we did earlier. So there maybe is another pipe or it's severely leaking through the hill. Because what I saw coming out of there, I don't think it is. Let's just get a few things out of here. Improve that flow a little bit. Look at the old telegraph line. Whole pole just fell down in here. Let's just try to get this thing working a little bit better. This is definitely a newer pipe. That other one over there is probably as old as the train company. When these train company went bankrupt, it was purchased and saved as a historic railroad to give rides. There we go. Look at all that current and undertow dragging stuff in. And this water is very cold because look, it's still semi-frozen but on a hot day that sure feels awesome Woo! all right we got that draining back a little bit now we got to go see is there another pipe there might be another pipe let's explore a little bit more further down this line and I didn't expect to be out here this long I'm a little too trusting. Got to stop leaving the vehicle with the keys in it. Good deep snowpack out here in the woods. No, I'm not seeing anything. I think there's a lot of leakage. Wow, the snowpack's deep. No, I don't think there's another pipe. Let's get back over and we'll go back to the road. Not much else we can do out here. Walking through the snow is a bit cold. Wonder how deep this is. Very deep there where this, I'm sure is very deep where they've been plowing it down the hill. See, I'm kind of standing on ice, but I wonder how deep the mud is down there. Oh, it's pretty solid. We'll walk right across. The air is actually cooler here in this little valley. Walking through some slush. It's actually pretty deep there. I might not be able to walk all the way through. Sure is refreshing, though, being out here. Woo! Look at I just cracked that. It's got no structural integrity at all. Yeah, we gotta walk back around. That would be over my waist. Can't really do much here, but let me show you the situation. Ow, just lost my shoe. And my toes are getting cold from this. But I'll be back to the car in just a minute. And yes, walking in this, you still could get frostbite despite being this hot. Yeah, see, bunch of things that I don't even think I can move, but I could get rid of the stuff that's against it blocking flow. Those things are not stopping much flow. It's the small things. But look how fast that's blasting. There's no way that right there blasting through. I don't know if you can tell, that would be big enough to walk in if this was completely clear. 
I don't know how that water's getting out of the pond on the other side. It's definitely not fitting through that little pipe I unclogged. It's severely seeping through the hill or it is some pipe hidden under the water I'm not seeing, which is probably blocked a good amount because you'd see movement or something, but I saw nothing. Yep, my toes are numb, but I've only had it a few minutes. It's warm. I'll get back before frostbite sets in. Although, that's not the smartest decision I've ever made. It is very hot out though. So this is the buildup I saw from the road. See how it's all backed up into here a bit? Possibly another pipe maybe, I don't know, probably not. But there's all kinds of blockages in the stream bed. They gotta come out with an excavator. I just took my shoes off because they're full of slush and stuff. Feet are pretty cold, but the asphalt's nice and warm. Not too worried about stepping on something out here in the middle of nowhere. Just having a fun day looking at stuff. Yeah, it does feel nice on my cold feet walking on this warm, sunny pavement. I'll be able to put my shoes on again soon. I just wanted to walk over to see where the water's going under the main road. And of course, the amazing New Hampshire DOT. There's no blockage. You only find blockages on roads like this after a big storm or a giant spring thaw. So that's the whole reason we're out in the first place. It's possible, but New Hampshire has the best maintenance of any state that I frequent. And they also have one of the biggest budgets. You see them replacing, refurbishing bridges, replacing roads, repaving roads, replacing culverts that don't even look like they need it. Awesome preventative maintenance in this state. As you can see further down the line, it looks like the train hasn't been down here yet. There's still a lot of trees across the tracks. And take a look at this one. That one was actually cut down intentionally, it looks like. But you can see they've already cut it a little bit off the tracks. Maybe it was dead and dangerous and they deemed to take it down. But I see lots of other debris sitting on the track there. And most of this railroad is not visible from the road, so they probably have a long ways to go. Spring cleanup is underway. That blockage I showed you, that's gonna stay there for such a long time. I remember one time in the winter when that railroad was closed, we walked a whole portion of it and there was so many culverts. You could see the exiting end, but the entrance was completely unrecognizable. You have no idea where they are because they just don't do the maintenance on them. So many of them are filling in with the gravel from the tracks, the ballast, and they never ever dug them out. And I can tell certain areas have flooded over the tracks during the thaw just as a result of that lack of maintenance. That entire railway is serviced by volunteers. That train you saw earlier, the maintenance crew, they're all volunteers who do that for free on that historic railroad. All their maintenance, everything is volunteers. Just sitting here. Yeah, this pipe doesn't have any blockage at all. You see? And this is exactly where the water from the blockage further up would end up and is going at the moment. Lots of melt water. Very warm day. Snow's melting like crazy. Beautiful out. Look up there in the mountains. Look at all that water trickling down those cliffs. So right here, about maybe 70 feet from that pipe, 
we come up to this. Certainly some of this water is seeping through the ground to get down to that other pipe we just looked at. And if this was overwhelmed, it would certainly start blasting down there. So there's definitely a pipe here. This is a pretty big stream. Look at that. Good amount of water coming down. Now I have no idea how deep this is. It could be over my head. It could be a couple feet. I don't know how big the pipe is. So first we're gonna go over to the other side and figure that out. Just take a look. This whole area was recently underwater, I can tell. Grass is all pushed down there. That would have got flooded by it. I know in years past this whole road has gone underwater from those blockages because that's what happens. We got these steep hills, water gets moving fast, it's able to drag things right into the pipes pretty fast. Wow, this is a pretty big pipe, so chances are this blockage won't be doable by us. Gonna have to wait for the excavator. That is a three foot diameter pipe. We'll give it a try and I am guessing there's a gigantic log or something to be able to back up that amount of water because that's got to have a lot of pressure against it. All right, as you can tell, I just poked at it with the rake. You see it's starting to move. We're going to set up camera number two. I actually got high hopes for this now. And I can tell you that pipe is stupidly undersized. Look at the size of this riverbed. You can tell this thing blasts. But the DOT puts that little thing in. Yes, that thing is old. When they replace it, they better put like a six footer in here at least, or maybe even a small bridge. Because who knows what debris this stream could bring down. Now, as you can tell, my pants are already wet from unclogging lots of other things today. Not even going to bother putting on the big high boots. It's a nice hot day. I will get right on in there. Actually, the pipe is closer to the surface than I thought, poking around with my rake. This water is not even up to my waist. So let's go set up camera number two and get started. All right, everyone, camera number two is set up. Big rocks, probably hundreds of pounds, unfortunately. Retaining wall kind of fell down. What's it doing? Is it going through a hole in the pipe? Well, that's kind of cool, all the surface clearing. That rock's not budging. Got 
Got to get it underneath this pole. Freezing. There we go. Wow, that thing fell far. So there, there's the opening. Gonna move. The river may have put this here. This may not even be the backdrop. Gonna budge. Might be able to loosen that up and get the dirt away from it. Maybe not. Feel like it's flowing a lot more than it was. Once we rock it and it moves a little bit, that's the key. It's not big, but I don't know how far back it goes. Let's try to find it. Water seems like it's already dropping too. I see a line around it. is big, still can't feel the end of it. Ugh, not budging. And this rock is like consistent right here, three feet wide. Massive one right there. So it's impossible for us to open it all the way, but we definitely improved it underneath the water. You don't see much in the top of the flow underneath is going good, as you'll be able to see on camera number two. If this massive guy wasn't here, I feel like we'd be able to open it more. Oh well, we're just gonna have to give up on that one. Let's go to the other side of the road and see what's up. Going back across the road. Yes, that is 100% flowing more. Flowing a lot better. Just look at the amount of water fitting through that tiny hole. And look at the size of the rocks that we're dealing with. It's probably the same deal on the other side. It most likely is an embankment just collapsed. Look at this. See right here, kind of sinking behind it. That might be down here soon. 
The pipe is still in good shape though. We got it flowing a bit more. Can't do anything when you're dealing with, let's take a look at these rocks. That one right there is probably 150 pounds. That one there is probably over 400 pounds. I can roll them, but that one over there, I didn't even find the end of it. It could be like that guy, we don't know. But knowing New Hampshire, they'll be right out here on it once I report it. We are driving past the location once again, looking for the mile marker to report it to the DOT. And this is the closest mile marker. They should see it. It's like 50 feet away. Mile marker 46.8. That will get reported to them and they should be on it. A little bit further down the road. Just wanted to stop and see what's up here. As you can see, this is a drain structure like they have in a city instead of a pipe. The DOT must have taken the cover off because it was getting clogged so easily. But I don't see anything wrong with this situation. Flowing nice. Had to stop and look at this situation about 50 feet further away from that. Water's coming out very nice. We have a pipe right here. Waterfall coming down, looks really nice. Lots of melting snow. This pipe is almost at capacity. Zero blockage at all. But it is undersized as you can tell. See the debris? This was all circling like a big whirlpool not too long ago. Look at all the water coming out of the ground, very active groundwater. Look at this water going under that snowbank, melting fast. This whole thing will be gone probably in the next couple days. See this right here? Broke loose, fell down into the water. The water going by eroded and melted it fast. Every time it collapses, that's actually a lot of fun. Look at this. We just caused a little blockage there, but that'll melt through so fast. See, it's already backing up. It might, I don't, it's not even gonna go around it. It's melting it like instantly. I stop because this right here is a problem. Is there a pipe here? There should be a pipe. That's a very big riverbed. Beautiful waterfall. Is there a pipe? I'm not seeing anything. For exact placement of a possible pipe, I wanna to walk to the other side, and that's how we will determine where it is. Yes, there is definitely a pipe. Here's another mile marker we might end up reporting. There's something out there in the woods. Old, rusted, twisted metal. What do you guys think of days like this? I love this kind of weather. You still got snow on the ground, even though it's in the 80s today for temperature. Every now and then you get a giant blast of freezing air. The wind just has to blow it out of the right valley or blow over the snow. So that pipe's in good shape. That looks like a 12 inch, maybe 18 inch diameter pipe. But considering how close this water is to the road, that might actually be pretty deep under where it will require an excavator to get to it. There's a good amount of water there too. And this isn't even the worst day as far as spring thaw is concerned. It could be raining and this would be definitely flooding over the road if that was the case. I can tell the water was up here, very close to the road. Even with, if that pipe was working, I can see this water blasting across this road so easily. I don't see anything. No, the water coming out of there is just seeping through the clog. I don't see anything. And the ground is probably still frozen deep underneath there. I don't see any evidence of it. Freezing cold water. I just had to get in here because maybe it's possible I can loosen something up. Maybe it's closer to the top than we think. No, that thing is going to be deep down there. The DOT is going to have to get this one too. That's pretty bad off. I remember one time I was up here during a spring thaw. I think it was last year, maybe two years ago. And the snow banks were bigger. The DOT knew there was going to be flooding and they were prepping. They were out here with an excavator digging out the snow banks, digging down to the culverts because they knew that the snow blocking them would not melt before the giant flood came 
So they were out manually doing it. Look at that. Less than five minutes completely melted and eroded what I did. I used to love this as a little kid. I would have sat here until the thing was gone, keep blocking it, watching the water back up, melt its way through. I would have just sat there until the snowbank was gone. But this pipe's working good. They're both very small pipes, and I can see how they were able to get blocked so easily. It's unfortunate that that blockage, we couldn't do anything at all. At least the first one we improved, but we can report them both to the DOT in New Hampshire, which actually cares, and they will be right on it. I have not seen a blockage at all in the state of New Hampshire that we couldn't undo, or I mean that I should say the DOT didn't show up and do. The ground is soft there, it almost grabbed me. Come to think of it, we're not that far. We're only maybe, maybe 45 minutes from, if you guys remember a, a blockage where the tree was blocking a bunch of it. We'll go by that. I think we can get there before it gets dark. Even if it is dark, I will still show it to you guys. We reported that last spring. Let's see if the DOT ever got to it. I'm sure if you guys have seen that video, you'll recognize it as soon as I show it. Right here is actually a pretty interesting situation. Just let me show you guys this. Right in here. Um, this is a man-made pond. And you can see... In the winter time, they let all the water out. This pond is supposed to be actually completely empty. But as you can see right there, look at that gigantic blockage on the dam making it fill up like halfway. Wow, I wish we were able to get permission to unclog that thing. That's really cool. It would also be very cool to come sometime when the water is being released right before it freezes over. They have to do that because if they let it freeze over, the ice on the surface of the pond would expand, possibly breaking the dam, which is made out of wood. And also, let me show you guys this before we pull back out into the road. I'm parked in the breakdown lane. I just had to come out and see this. So this is the water entering that pond. That is a permanent beaver pond, like 200 feet upstream from that wooden dam I just showed you. Look at this culvert pipe. The water's just coming up. Barely anything can fit out of there. Downstream, this all needs to be dredged with an excavator, only in like 30 feet. That would solve that problem. So it's, the sediment is backed up all underneath the road too. I thought there may have been a blockage over here and because of the lack of maintenance there. Well, there was a snow bank, you gotta remember, it's 80 degrees, this whole place was probably a giant snow bank just two days ago. So it's not really the DOT's fault. So yes, there is a blockage here, and you can see that sediment has blocked or built up all the way in here. Whole riverbed needs to be dredged. That's supposed to be probably two or more feet deeper. Look at that culvert pipe right there. It's not blocked, but that's like 90% of its capacity is gone. Look at that thing. Wow. And the DOT will probably take care of this place. National Forest Service building also. Look at the water just coming through this property. Look at all this water. It's coming right underneath that building. I don't know. There's a ranger living there year-round. It looks like a light on inside there. It's going right underneath the building. I'm surprised that mud's not causing structural problems, but it's probably got very, very deep footings. So all this has to be done by the DOT. Yeah, there's just stuff floating here. There's no blockage on that pipe. It's capacity is just cut so much that it's backing up yeah that was interesting to see showing you how that all got backed up it's just from debris forming inside the uh, drainage canal or the stream bed after the road you see how it's a chain reaction all the way upstream just building up collecting sediment overflowing backing up all the pipes wow it's just an just goes on forever. It's a domino effect upstream. There are so many pipes, one after another every 50 feet in these mountains. There has to be, or it'll go over the road. Right there, look at all that debris to the left. That one, you can tell the road was probably underwater when that was at its max. Yeah, one after another. There's a culvert like every 50 feet on this road. And you see up here where the pavement suddenly changes, 
the stream right next to it, that's the Sacco River. It completely washed out the road here like five years ago. That's why the pavement's a different color. But this is a state highway, and they got on that immediately because it's a state highway. Fixed fast. And right here may have been another washout. You see where the pavement suddenly changes again? Yeah, look how close we are to the water. Yeah, that this was probably another washout where the pavement changed. This is a very beautiful road in New Hampshire. I remember that Sacco River back there. It's good to see it at, at a good level right now. It looks like this year it's not going to hit flood stage because everything's melting without a rainstorm. And I remember last year I was showing you guys, if you remember, I made a video about drought conditions last year. It was like the second driest year on record around here. And that river actually came to a halt in certain places. The water table was so low, the Sacco River was not flowing at all. It's completely dried up. This right here, we're driving over. There's a couple waterfalls, one right there. And this next little bridge is another beautiful waterfall to the right and completely dried up. And that railroad track right over to our left again. Yep, I expect all the snow to be gone like a week with this kind of weather. Here's where the railroad track comes out of the mountain. And the snow will take a while right here for it to completely thaw out where the train can get through. Yes, they could definitely plow it, but I just want to show you how deep the snow is in the canyon where the train is. Right here, look at that. Very deep snow on the railroad tracks. And there is probably hundreds of trees on that long stretch of railroad that they're gonna have to clear before they can use this track again for tourists. Now, this is where the Sacco River officially begins. This is called the Sacco Lake, this body of water here. Yes, it's small like a pond, but it is labeled as a lake. And I wanna show you guys something very interesting. The parking area I can't pull into because of the big snow bank, but we're just gonna get out for a brief moment. That is what they call Mount Elephant Head. It's only about a 20 minute hike. You see what happened here? During a flash flood, during the middle of the winter, we got a couple warm days with heavy rain. Not this warm, but a lot of heavy rain. A giant mudslide came down the mountain and it's sitting right now on top of the ice. No, this is not that shallow. That there's a mud bar showing right there. A, from right there, you see where the snow is kind of tapered? That snow is on top of mud. During the winter, a big mud slide came out of there, and that's what you see all this debris sitting all over the ice. And in case you guys are wondering, that's where the train ride ends. And in the fall, it continues down. There's another train station. Haven't done those in years since I was a kid. But you see, look at this. This has just started flowing a lot. All that debris is gonna to sink to the bottom of the pond probably in the next few days as the water opens up. When we were here last summer during the drought, this had zero flow going over it. In fact, the water was a couple feet down below the dam, which means this beginning of the Sacco River was completely dry before little streams started picking it up again. And that pile of debris right there is from me. I dismantled a beaver dam that was across the top of this, causing it to back up a little bit. This pond is very sensitive. You can't have it back up at all. There's a trail that follows it in some places only inches above the level of the pond. So that trail that follows around the entire thing floods really easy. And the parking lot here also floods very easy. See, it's only like a foot above and honestly a heavy vehicle would probably sink into this mud pretty easily. You see all the water trickling right here? I saw this place once when the beavers clogged it. The water was coming through here, the river was going there, and then down into that culvert pipe. Hey, another blockage here. Looks like it's been blocked a long time, the culvert underneath this driveway. See the water's going down there. It's completely grown in with grass. This thing silted up and grew in with grass a long time ago. Ground is likely frozen there was a foot of snow here just days ago. Look at this, you can't even see where the pipe comes out. 
That has been neglected such a long time. Mount Washington's looking really beautiful today. Losing a lot of its snow. That was, the whole mountain was pure white down to the base last time I was up here. Look at this giant flood to my left. Yep, I've been there before. They have a stupid undersized pipe. You saw the snowmobile trail has an actual big bridge, but the road has a 18 inch pipe, which is a giant bottleneck in that stream. I've seen it there flooding over the road before and it's the stupidest pipe in the world. It acts like a retention pond. As soon as the melt stops and it gets a little colder, that will reduce fast. All the frost heaves I showed on this road about a month back have all receded. No more giant bumps that make you hit the stop blocks when you blast over them. The water's not flowing that high, so we didn't stop to look at any of the waterfalls. It, it, it's flowing good, but it's not near flood stage or anything. I can still see tons of riverbank. Just taking a ride up this road as everything's melting a lot. Who knows where you could find a blockage this time of year. They could be anywhere. New Hampshire DOT can't keep up with it when there's a lot of water going by. Why did the guy in front of me appearingly pressure wash half the van? A very nice convenient parking spot for this culvert pipe. Let's get out and see if the... Uh, I don't think they did actually. That'll be the first one I reported in this state that didn't get fixed. It looks like the tree might still be there. Walking on over. I remember the first time we came here, I noticed the blockage, not because I could see it from the road, but because see the debris here? This is proof that it was up and this whole structure was underwater at some point. But this might be just from this blasting water not too long ago. Last year when I came here, this was completely blocked and backing up. Remember all the rocks tumbling through there? Must have released two feet of rocks that built up behind it. These sticks are all new from the winter time. Actually, all of this might be new from the winter time. If you guys remember that when I was here, this side was completely blocked still when I left. They may have unclogged it and this was just crammed here by the spring thaw. I'm seeing a couple pieces there that I cannot possibly move by myself. It looks a lot better than last year, so what do you think? Me unclogging this, did that give it an opportunity to erode the other one? Or did the DOT actually come here and unclog it? I'm not sure. But see big sticks like this? I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Grab it. Pull it on out of here. Hopefully. It's stuck! Come on! There's a branch that was stuck. There we go. Backing out of here with it. Get it out of there. And now these other ones, I'm not gonna try to get them out of here. There's no more culverts downstream. We're in the middle of nowhere. I'm gonna try to straighten it out so it can get taken through the pipe now or in a little bit. Yeah, that giant tree's not here. The DOT did it. I can't believe it. Wow. Well, it's New Hampshire for you. They responded to my request. Yeah, there's no, that tree was huge last year. It's gone. This stuff here was probably just thrown here by the spring thaw. Oh no, wrong again. This may have been the thing I couldn't move. Or it was just put here. I may have given it the opportunity on clogging it last year so it could erode and get the other pipe working. So this one is wide open once again. Just a little bit of preventative maintenance will go a long way. If I didn't do that, Leaves and stuff will just cram against it until it's completely blocked again. So what do you guys think? Leave in the comments. Did the DOT do something and this was just placed here? This heavy old thing? Or is this part of the tree I was unable to move? And this eroding... I, did I start a chain reaction of erosion that got the whole thing clear by itself? Or did the DOT do it? Let me know what you guys think. Um possible the DOT came out but I'm more thinking now that I started a chain reaction that was so cool there was 
feet worth of those pebbles built up behind it. And as soon as I removed the blockage, probably for hours, maybe even days, rocks were tumbling through. It's pretty loud making a cool noise. I was out of the car less than five minutes there. People always ask me, why don't you shut your vehicle off when you get out? Well, I used to do that all the time. I would shut it off, turn it back on every couple minutes, every pipe I'm checking. And I was told by my mechanic to knock that off because 90% of your engine's wear and tear is in the first 30 seconds of startup. Even being off a couple minutes, yes, you're saving fuel in a modern vehicle, but it's not worth the wear and tear. When you shut it off, all the oil settles back down. It's not as bad as if, as, as if it was off for hours, but still lots of unnecessary wear and tear also on the starter. Letting it run is way better for the vehicle if you're only gonna be gone five minutes or so. And um, yeah, I wanna take care of my engines in my car. This car now has 321,000 miles on it. Engine and transmission are running perfect. It's not having any shifting problems, never has. In fact, it works better than the day I got it. I don't think the previous owner did transmission fluid changes, which you're supposed to do with this car every 60,000 miles, the manufacturer says. Oh yeah, and this car has a special ignition switch. The way it works is, the car will stay running, but if I'm away from it, it will refuse to shift into drive so no one could steal it if I'm away for a couple minutes.